Okay. I want to show you something else because there's something interesting that keeps happening every time I look at these aggregations of cicadas. And I've seen a bunch now, but you'll see some. Well, let me show you what's normal first. So you'll see these exuviae, the exoskeletons that have been discarded. And you'll see circumstances where there is a cicada that is emerging from one of these exuviae. Let's see if I can find one. This one. Perfect. It's emerging from its exuviae. You see the way it's twitching? It's forcing its body through hydrostatic pressure to push its way out of that exoskeleton. You can even see the tubes that were attached to the breathing system, the trachea. But ever so often, and I mean, you'll see it a lot more in insects like this because there are just so many of them, so the rate that this happens will be... Uh, uh, the, the rate that this happens is probably similar to in other insects, but you'll just see it more because there are so many examples. But check it out. Ever so often, you get a cicada that is no longer white, representing that its exoskeleton is hardened, but it's still partially inside of the exoskeleton it was attempting to discard. And we don't know all of the reasons why this happens, but at the end of the day... There is a chemical process happening that allows for its exoskeleton to uh, reach the point where it's going to be functional. And check it out, we've got another example right there. And that process is happening regardless of what they choose to do at this point. Like, it's sort of a whether you like it or not, you have to get out of this shell. And so the big issue that then occurs is, what happens if they take too long? What happens if one of their legs gets stuck against uh, or inside of um, their their old exoskeleton and they can't get away well unfortunately their body hardens in a way where it's deformed because this exoskeleton is pressing against what was a very soft body and as a result of that that cicada is not going to be viable. It's not going to survive. It won't be able to move properly, even if it could get its way out of there. And by the time you see it like this, where most of the body is still stuck in there, sometimes they'll get a leg stuck in there and they can walk around with with a bum leg, but they can't walk around if all of their legs are messed up or if their abdomen happens to be messed up in this process. And so it's very important for them to get out of that exoskeleton as soon as possible. And I'm going to show you an example of a cicada that probably didn't move fast enough. Look, this one is, is emerging right now. It's got to get out of there quickly or problems will ensue. But I'm pretty confident that if we keep looking around this tree, we will see one with some messed up looking wings or legs or... Let me see. Hmm... What do we got? What do we got? Let's zoom out a little bit. Hmm. Nope. You guys are looking pretty healthy, actually. All right. Well. Ah, uh, ha, ha. There you go. Check this one out. Or maybe I should film it from this side. It'll be a little bit easier to see. And sometimes this happens because... Oh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> well look check that out so I bumped into one and it fell out of the tree and it gives you a really good example of what I'm talking about this cicada is much smaller than it should be its wings are tiny and hardly even functional let me see let me get a better better image of this okay so you can see those, let's zoom in. You can see those barely functional wings. And you might have an idea of what happened here based on the fact that it has an exoskeleton on its back. Another cicada climbed on its body while it was trying to emerge. And as a result, it probably wasn't able to get out of its own exoskeleton quickly enough. Check it out. Here's another example up here. Well, actually... This gives you a clear indication of why this is such a 
a difficult process when you've got all of your friends emerging at once. And in that way, it's possible that this actually does happen more in cicadas than it does in other insects, simply because of the mass emergence itself. As these cicadas climb all on top of each other in the competition for life, you will see this occur. Look at this. This one was trying to emerge. Another cicada climbed on top of it and emerged first, and now it's stuck. It will not survive this experience. Look, its body is clearly deformed by what has occurred here. Even though the cicada is likely still responsive to stimuli, it's still alive. Notice its legs move. It's not going to be able to make it. Its wings aren't going to be able to form properly. Uh, part of its abdomen is uh, almost crushed by what's occurring here. You can see that it's turned this grayish color. That's the, the color that hemolymph, the, the blood of these cicadas, turns when it's been exposed to air, and so there's probably some element of it that's been punctured in this way. It's just, it's a rough life sometimes when you've got everybody trying to emerge at once, and you've got this competition for limited resources in terms of space. They may not be fighting over food, but they're certainly fighting over space. And you can tell that some of them just didn't even get as much to eat as some of the other cicadas because that one is a lot smaller than its compatriots. So, there you go.